Obviously, I have been focusing almost exclusively on the first two and a half chapters of this book. I haven't said anything about the rest of the book. Nor have I said anything about an array of parallel passages. That would really involve me in quite a lot of different sort of analysis. The passages really are of two sorts. On the one hand, there is a passage like Galatians 3.28. And all of us who have put on Christ have been baptized into Christ. That sort of passage. It will not do for complementarians simply to say what those passages don't say. They may be right, but it's not enough simply to say what they don't say. It is crucially important to say what they do say and rejoice in it. Then on the other hand, there is an array of passages like 1 Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 15, passages in 1 Peter and Ephesians 5, most of which, not all of which, but most of which are sometimes called house tafen, house tables, household tables of conduct. One of the interesting things about all of those is that without exception, without exception, the submission is toward the man. The love as Christ loved the church is from the man to the woman. What is sometimes set over against those sorts of passages as if it's the definitive knockout is Romans 5.21, submitting ourselves to one another, submit yourselves one to another. And so if, therefore, you have these four or five major house tables where, in fact, the submission is always one way, well, there's always Ephesians 5.21 to bail us out and we all submit to one another after all. It's all sort of a mutual submission. And that argument, although it's been responded to many, many, many times, um, uh, it keeps coming up for reruns. I heard it the other day on the, uh, from, from the mouth of a systematician who really should know a lot better. If you want to hold that position, at least don't give a bad argument to support it. Uh, the, the, the fact of the matter is that the pronoun involved, alelus, can be perfectly reciprocal, but might not be. Everything depends on the context. So several times in the book of Revelation, for example, in scenes of mayhem where they killed alelus, they killed one another. It doesn't mean that they all shot at exactly the same time and killed each other reciprocally. It's, it's, it's more generic than that, do you see? And in this particular instance, in the flow of the argument, the submission to one another is then worked out in terms of wives to husbands, children to parents, slaves to masters. Now, there are countervailing things that must also be said. I can't get around the comprehensiveness of men love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Which, if it means anything at all, if it has any bite at all, means loving her self-sacrificially for her good. You better not talk too much about submission unless your love for your spouse takes on that character. That is, it is demonstrably, repeatedly, characteristically self-sacrificial and for her good. Work that one out. Having said that, the example once again is Christ Jesus, who self-sacrifice for the good of the church takes him to the cross. It does not diminish his authority. What we must not have then is some kind of exegesis that lines up the desired proof text one particular way and can't feel the full-orbed bite of the whole thing.